Afternoon, ladies and gents. It's Simon Brown here. Today, uh, Warren Peacock from trade, the Traders Place is going to be doing our presentation. He's looking particularly at candlestick patterns. In particular, he's looking at four of them. There are, I was going to say hundreds, there might even be thousands of candlestick patterns. Um, and he's really distilling it down and saying these are the ones that are worth looking at. Um, and the others are, are there, uh, by his definition, of lesser importance. Yeah, good so candles are just a representation of the market participants aggregate view and emotional response to the current price. The important thing about candles is they're not predictive. All they are are triggers after the trade idea has occurred to you. So whether you're using a MACD or whether you're using support and resistance, you can apply a standard candle pattern as a trigger to enter the trade. It gives you a definite entry point and it also gives you a definite stop loss area. We're going to look at two bullish candle patterns and two bearish candle patterns. Uh, the next important thing to note is that bullish patterns must occur on support and bearish patterns must occur at resistance to be tradable. You will see these patterns all over your chart. I would only trade them whether they're on support or on resistance. Uh, the next thing is because a candle has a wick and a body, I use something called a support and resistance zone and not just a single line. Uh, that basically answers the question I get asked most often is how do I do draw support and resistance on candles. Quite simply, you take the highest wick and the highest body to draw your resistance line. And then on the bottom end, you would look at the lowest wick and the lowest body in the consolidation to draw your zones in. We're going to go to the next slide. We're going to be looking at a bullish hammer. Uh, there are a couple of rules around candle patterns. On a bullish hammer, simply the wick must be greater than twice the size of the body. And that's really important. If it's less than dive hole, then it's not a hammer and it's not tradable. The color of the body doesn't matter. We do prefer a green one generally, but I'll use the red one in this case because they really don't matter. Uh, the important thing is that it occurs on a support line. And on the next slide, you're going to see an example that I pulled out of a share it is on a daily chart, and you'll see there's actually two pan candle patterns in one on this particular slide. Support zone right at the bottom, I've circled the hammer. You can see that that wick is more than double the size of the body. That makes it a hammer. It makes it a tradable hammer because it occurred near a zone. The wick actually crossed through the zone, uh, and Steve Nissel would call that a snap and crack. Two prior support levels and then a false break to the downside gave us the hammer pattern. The open of the next candle is the buying zone and your stop loss would be the bottom of the wick. Or in this case, you could even have used the lower support line. For the next slide, I just showed the result of the trade. Obviously, every trade is going to be different. We all know Aspen has been a straight line share. You can see that this particular screenshot was taken way back in 2008. Uh, and we all know what happened to Aspen since then. I'm not saying that you would have held all that time, but if you are an investor type and you know that Aspen is, you know, it's a good quality business, if there's recession, then pharmaceuticals tend to do well. You may have been using the hammer just to get into the trend and you're going to apply it all the way through at every support level one of these two patterns occurs. Uh, as Simon said earlier, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of candle patterns. I've just watered these two down to basically the ones that I use. And that's going to be the hammer, and then the next one is the shooting star. Now, not to be confused, at the end of the day, bearish shooting stars are single candle patterns. When we get to the next set, which are the morning and evening stars, those are three candles in the pattern. The bearish shooting star has the same rules as the hammer. The width must be greater than twice the size of the body. And again, the body color doesn't matter. And resistance. So on the next slide, you'll be able to see uh, I drew my resistance level in. I've used the SA40 in this example, the index. Uh, you can see that I've got, I've taken the highest bash and I've taken the highest wick. We had the market coming off. 
and then we had a big uh, green candle pushing up into the resistance area and then we got the shooting star close enough, I consider that close enough to be at resistance and the trade is triggered on the completion of the candle, please do not pre-empt these uh, you know, if you've got a five minute chart it takes five minutes for the candle to finish, if you've got an hourly chart it takes an hour for it to finish the fact that it has an upper width means that at one stage it was a green candle uh, so please don't preempt them, wait for them to close, you've got plenty of time the open of the next candle gives us the trade entry the top of that shooting star would be a stop loss area just going to show you the result of that particular trade the rules are simple, the width must be double the size of the body or more on both of these candles the shooting star must occur at resistance and the hammer must occur on support uh, the next slide will show us the result. It was a nice good move. It's actually quite recent, the uh, 3rd of May. Once again, I'm not saying that you would have caught the whole trend, but they are important. When they occur at resistance, you can consider it a turning point. The nice thing is you've got a definitive stop loss. The candle pattern has failed once another candle closes above the wick. The next slide is going to show my favorite candle pattern of them all called the bullish morning star a few more rules to this one firstly a downtrend is required you need to have a downtrend for these to occur the first candle is the big red candle if you're using uh, black and white then it would be a big black candle followed by a doji or a small body candle uh, it's a small little red candle there that is small enough if it's much bigger than that then uh, I don't consider it doji or small enough and that ideally should be below the close of the first big red candle we then need a big green candle that is at or near the close of the red that's the first red candle and closes above the upper two thirds of that red candle's body so I don't want it to be in the, in the lower third, I'd like it to be up in the upper two thirds. Just quite simply remember what we said in the beginning, it is a reflection of the market's emotion. If you look at the candles, you can just see what the market is thinking. There was a, there was a big downtrend, there was a blow-off candle, there's indecision on the doji, and then we get a nice big green body thereafter, showing us a potential change the expectation of the market. On the next slide, there's a trade setup. Now you'll notice on this one that there's a little bit more time elapsed. You know, in the first couple of slides we had quite a quite a short period of time. It was an hourly chart. A little bit of time elapsed between uh, the initial support and resistance levels before the candle gave us the trigger. Here I've used a longer time sequence. There's a good couple of months in this trade. It was historical support back in November 2009 and then in the beginning of 2010 at 23,000 points we had our morning star on the daily SA40 so what it, all it does is it gives us a trigger for the trade, it gives us a defined stop loss and off we go so rule is green body must be in the upper two thirds of the big red candle and the middle candle should at least be a doji or a small bodied candle the next slide gives us the results and I think most of us would know the market went up to 26,500 points and if you look at that top you can see a different example of the same candle pattern that we're going to be looking at shortly called the bearish evening star it didn't occur at resistance but it still qualifies as a pattern and you could then use that as your next resistance level so candle patterns that occur at non-tradable areas can become future support and resistance levels Okay, we're going to have a look now at the bearish evening star. An uptrend is required. We then get a blow of green candle or a white candle if you're using black and white, followed by a doji at or near the top of that green body, and then we want to see the big red candle selling off from that high, and it should open at or near the close of the big green candle, and it must close lower than two thirds of the body of the first green candle now 
on an end of day chart, you actually want that doji to be slightly higher than the other two candles. Uh, an intraday chart, they can be level. If you've got a 24 hour market like the RG SA40, then very seldom will you actually get perfect candle patterns because of the continuous nature of the price. So it opens and closes, basically the new candle opens at the same price that the old candle closed at, and therefore the, you, know, you just sort of have to adjust your rules a little bit. Okay, there's the example. Remember, we have to have an uptrend, we have to have a historical resistance level, and at least part of the candle must be near that resistance. Now, when they occur in blow-off areas, you can see what happens. It doesn't go into the actual zone clearly. All it does is it spikes up there. So we've got historical resistance on the left-hand side. We then get a pullback. The market then returned to test that resistance level and we had the bearish evening star occurring. Nice big blow of green candle, didn't quite make resistance. The doji, the width of the doji didn't quite make resistance. Then during that time frame, that hour, the candle was green, went into the resistance zone, and then had a big sell-off, close below two-thirds of the green candle, and we have ourselves a trigger for a short trade. The wick of the candle pattern becomes the stop loss, and when we go through to the next slide, you can see the result of, the, of that candle pattern. It was a big sell-off, it was just the other day. We can see, you know, for nervous traders, there would have been a few moments of, of hesitation there where the market sold off immediately after the evening star, and then tried to retrace, failed to make a new high, pulled down again, found support, your nerves would have been finished, and you can see that this took place over a number of days. The market then pushed up again with a blow of green candle that gave us a shooting star, not to be confused with the bearish evening star, gave us a shooting star but not at resistance. All that can do is just give us a confirmation that we're in the right direction for this trade and we can see the result afterwards. The market fell off, went straight through support uh, and then continued down to 29,900 points. Okay, the thing with candle pattern is now is there's a couple of variations for the bearish, uh, the, the bearish evening star and the bullish morning star. On the next slide, you're going to see some variation. The basic thing is that the third candle should occur better than two thirds of the first candle. And you can see here on the left hand side, we've got uh, one of the variations where the red candle actually engulfs the first green candle. That is also an evening star. Just the pressure from the market was greater on the down move than it was on the up move. It's at resistance. We've got a small body after the, the green blow off candle into resistance, and then the red candle engulfs the entire pattern. And you can see the result there. On the right hand side, I've given an example of another type of bullish candle pattern. You can have up to four, even a stretch, five small bodied candles between the first red candle and the last green candle to give us the morning star. So the rules are straightforward. Small bodied candles on the bullish side it would occur between a firstly a big red candle selling off. We then get our small body candles and we get a big green candle that closes higher than two thirds of the red candle's body. In this case the green candle fully engulfed that red candle, fully engulfed the pattern giving us a really strong indication that this trend looks to have changed from down to up. These are my favorite four patterns. There are many other patterns with the same validity. Anybody who studied candles would know, you know, Haramis, engulfing lines, um, railway tracks, that kind of stuff. These are just my particular four favorites. I use them every day. I'm looking for them on the SA40. When it comes to end of day shares, they do not occur that often. So they're relatively rare, which makes them even better. On the SA40, they very often occur on my support zones, uh, whether you're using Fibonacci's, whether you're using horizontal support and resistance lines, or maybe you're using some other indicator, an oscillator like a stochastic, for instance. Uh, the candle is just simply a trigger. They do have all turning points. If you see a candle pattern, the first thing you need to do is check for support or resistance, depending on what pattern you're getting. 
Once you find support and resistance, you confirm the pattern. So like I said earlier, you're going to get these patterns in the middle of a trend. They're not great for trade entries. It might be great for continuation pattern or something like that, but it's not a really good place to, to start your trade. The entry for the position is at the open of the next candle, and the stop loss is a close above or below the entire candle pattern. If that wick is too long, and it exceeds your stop loss requirement, you, know, you should have a percentage of capital or whatever for a stop loss. If it exceeds that, then you can either skip the trade, in other words, you do not make the trade, or you stick to your percentage rule. And once again, you're welcome to, to contact me. Uh, you can find my website at www.thetradersplace.co.za. You're welcome to give me an email, warren at thetradersplace.coza, or there's my phone number as well. You can give me a shout if you want to discuss anything that we've had a look at today. <clears throat> cool, Warren, thanks. Uh, folks, if you've got questions, pop them into the, the, the question box on the GoToWebinar application. A couple come through. Uh, Naresh asking, SA40 the same as Aussie? Yes, uh, SA40 you find on the uh, uh, IG Marcus platform. It's a 24-hour one. Uh, Victor is asking if they work across time frames. I mean, you gave us some examples there that were five-minute and end of day and the like. Can you pretty much take these and drop them into a preferred time frame? Uh, personally, I prefer the hour and the 10 minute on the SA40, but they do work across, across time frames. Uh, you know, if you look at a weekly chart and you find one of these patterns, they're far more powerful the bigger the time frame. But they do work across the board. Uh, I'm just very wary of putting them uh, you know, into five-minute charts because they occur so often that it actually makes them invalid. Uh, I would prefer to, when I look at a chart, if I see lots of hammers and lots of shooting stars, I ignore that kind of pattern totally. If there's hardly any, then I would take it seriously. Uh, Ivan is asking about more profit in an hourly chart than a five-minute chart. Ivan, typically the rule is that as you drop time frames, what happens is your frequency increases, your profit decreases, um, as is your profit loss ratio. So, and the thing with a five-minute chart is you're there clicking away like crazy. I, I'm with Warren there. Five-minute chart gives me far too many signals. I, I typically t stick to the, the 15. A question uh, from... Sorry, the Doug Confirm we heard from uh, using TA to time an investment trade. Warren, you kind of alluded to that. So uh, with Aspen, you, you like the stock from a fundamental perspective, and you can use the candle to, to get you your entry point into what is ultimately a fundamental trade. Fair comment? Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you're going to be an investor, you, you might have a time frame of five years and longer. Uh, you, might, you might have bought Aspen you know, 10 years ago. And you can use these kind of patterns to either add to that position because you would be building a position as an investor as opposed to trading it. So it depends mm -hmm. exactly what you are looking at. Yeah? If you're looking for an investment, then yes, you can use your candles the same way that you would to trade them, except that you wouldn't have, you might not have as tight a stop loss on it. You might extend your stop loss to 15% or whatever from entry, but you can surely use them to time your entry to add into positions. Yeah, I use it. On my very long-term portfolio, not, but on my sort of medium-term stuff, I identify the stock and then I use uh, some 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 uh, tec technicals to get me in. Uh, Ivan is asking if you consider volume at all. Um, only if I'm looking to trade a stock, uh, and only then as a secondary thing. I'm not uh, I'm not a, a, a great believer that volume is going to give me too many things. I prefer to use something like on balance volume just to looking for divergences at potential turning points. Uh, so if I wanted to buy, let's use an example, Anglo-American today, uh, I've got a candle pattern I might put on on balance volume to see whether that big downtrend is actually supported by volume. In other words, if on balance volume is going upwards and my chart is not coming down, then I've got a divergence and I'd be then looking for a trigger to enter the trade. Uh, Lauren asks, recognizing an evening star from a shooting star. Okay, the evening star requires three patterns, uh, three candles in the pattern, and the shooting star is an upside down hammer. Ah, okay. People refer to it as inverted hammer. It's not quite the correct uh, translation from Japanese.
Okay, yeah, and it's uh, the three. And then there was another question coming through. Uh, I think it was from Simpi where he says, "Is a multiple candle pattern uh, stronger than a single candle pattern? For example, the Morning Star, which is a, a couple of candles in that pattern, does that give it perhaps a more reliability, a, a higher strength level?" Uh, yes, they are deemed to be stronger. You know, two candle pattern is stronger than a single candle, mm -hmm. and then of course the three candle or five candle patterns are even stronger than that. Cool. And then a last question coming through from Naresh. He's asking if you're uh, only using support resistance and the candle patterns for the the SA40, or if you're bringing in indicators and oscillators as well. Uh, don't particularly like oscillators and other indicators. I use my support and resistance, and I use my candle patterns as my main trading um, trading tool. When I look at when I need to know. You know, how oversold is the market, then I would use something like a stochastic uh, just to give me yeah, the stretch of the market. The market is elastic. If I'm going to buy something on support, I would prefer the stochastic to be lower than I would it for it to be higher. Uh, but they're not my main triggers. Gotcha. Folks, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through, and we are approaching uh, full time, so if there's no more through, uh, my thanks to you, Warren. Um, I, I, I like candles. As you said, you can see a lot more information in a candle than you could in a simple line chart. Um, I think that the trick is, is going through and finding those ones that work, and I think that was the, the value here, and certainly a, a bunch of feedback. Uh, Mike, uh, Ivan, a couple of folks uh, really appreciating it. Warren, thanks very much for your time today. Uh, ladies and gents, thanks for your time for attending. Cheers all. Thank you, Simon. Cheers.